Hey folks, welcome to Two Sports Scientists and Some Guy Podcast. Please allow me to introduce myself, your host, Dr. Mike Isretel, PhD, Sport Physiology, Head Science Consultant, Renaissance Periodization, etc., 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 and my co-host, Dr. James Hoffman. Not you. Hold up. You're Hold just up. some guy. You're some guy. Damn. Also, PhD, Sport Physiology. Former director of sport and exercise science uh, at Temple University. Correct. And current um, man of many talents. Always. And some guy, Mr. Marcos Ooh, Rodriguez, damn. who happens to hold an honorary PhD from multiple ayahuasca universities. And of course, the street. The street where he is from. The streets. I didn't know that. But cool. Thank you. Oh, you speak. What's up, man? <laughs> Hello, friends. So, here's the deal, folks. <clears throat> Episode number one. Just not in it. Scott, the sound guy. Are you off camera conveniently? Creep. So. Don't stare at me. It makes me feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be doing a whole lot of fun things on this here podcast. And um, we're going to be a lot, doing a lot of answering your questions. And we have will occasionally make requests on usually my Facebook. So follow me, Mike is on Facebook. And my Instagram at R P D R M I K E. So on Instagram. We did a seminar last night, and one of my biggest critiques from somebody, somebody came up to me at the end of the night and was like, dude, your Instagram sucks. Um, <laughs> I, I, like, uh, really I was mean. like, I was like, it's just for me. I just post whatever I want, which is usually like cats, comic books, stupid shit. Well, you like, have no friends. So he that was makes like, sense. yeah, no. And he was like, bro, you need to like post lifting stuff, advice, like progress pics. Uh, he was just like, your Instagram sucks. I'm just telling like, you. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so funny. No, well, you know what? Your I thought it was accurate. Great. Well, it's like compared to like, I don't post here. as much as Mike does. Um, but I was yeah. like, wow. Yeah, that was rude. So, ask me questions. We'll occasionally post uh, requests for questions. And we did uh, just recently. And we got a bunch. So, eventually, we'll have guests on here and everything like that. But for this first inaugural episode where we take the uh, the metaphorical champagne uh, bottle to the ship, so to speak. Champagne. Boom. And uh, we're going to just get rolling answering your questions. We will call you all by name. We will be friendly, and occasionally we will take you to task for asking things that don't make no damn sense. Ouch. So, shall we it. start? Scott the Sound Guy? Look okay? All right. First up is from Facebook, Mikhail Blom. Not Bloom, he just has one O. Not Blow Me. <laughs> He's pretty sweet. Fake name or real name. Question, body parts and execution if you just want to look good naked for the opposite sex. Number one, dick. Continue. Marcos, thoughts? Shit, he uh, stumped me with that one. That's uh, probably, yeah, that's true, but uh, love yourself. How about that? <laughs> that's just <laughs> a prerequisite. Damn. Before we even get started. Okay, so before anything we else. have two facts so far for you, Mikhail. Uh Answer is work on your dick. So you can get like a dumbbell, mm -hmm. and if you have the length, you can tie it around, you know. And then it stretches. And you just let it hang out all day. You don't all even have day. to do anything. You don't have to deload. No. And then um, love yourself. Why? I don't, I don't understand how that applies. Marcos, can you explain? Well, if you're a 400-pound BBW and you feel like you look great naked, then you do look great naked. So chances Fuck. are you're going to get laid and someone's going to love you because you love yourself. Boom. Boom. That's what's up. Fuck the haters, basically. So this was, this was a guy, right, who asked this? Yeah. So I think it's fair to say the chicks really like the uh, like hip flexor look on the guy. They do. Oh, yeah. That's like the favorite girl muscle is like the fuck abs part. Mm -hmm. But Mike's that's not never really... seen that. <laughs> on a guy up close? No, Marcos, I don't roll with the kind of circles you do. I'll show you later. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, later will be fun. But that's one of those muscles that are usually so um, just well-developed if you are doing sporting stuff or lifting, they tend to get a lot of just indirect work from you doing other things. So they tend to be well-developed on their own. The only way to really make them shine is by being really lean. Gotta be lean. There's no other way. Yeah. So I think Otherwise, you just get like big love handle look. Totally. So the, 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 the actual advice we have for you, 
um, is, uh, you know, train with weights. Uh, I would say focus on chest, shoulders, and arms a lot because to be completely Don't train honest, legs. Uh, don't train legs. Like, girls don't like your legs. Also, let's be real. If you have big legs and makes your dick look smaller by comparison, you're just not going to – I don't care who you are, freaks of cotton. You're not going to outsize a 30-inch quad. It's just not going to happen. You're just going to look whatever. Look at like so, the porn stars. Right? Yeah, they don't have big they, legs. They all have tiny legs, and they all have real jacked upper bodies. Not that like porn stars are the ideal look for So you're basically woman, say but, be built like Marcos over here. <laughs> I'm not saying, dog. I'm just saying. Marcus is holding James' mm-hmm. hand for those of you who are not mm-hmm. watching this episode. Dylan, you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, seriously. It's a bit early for this shit. Sorry. But on a serious note, yeah, just get jacked, chest, arms, shit like that. And uh, train your abs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, adults. Train your abs with resistance because the, you have big pop out abs. Pop out. Like you spelled the uh, traps wrong. Traps. You know, okay, actually, let's 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 take an opportunity to get a little sidetracked here. Do uh, do females, and if you're uh, if you're uh, if you're gay, do the uh, other males? Do they like uh, the traps? A uh, traps a sex muscle? Because I've never for, had a girl come up to me men, like your calves are hot. Like uh, clearly, it's not calves. For men looking at other men, yes. Okay, so the gay community probably like no, the traps. Just like even the hetero men, it's like you, you totally. have a trap pick, and they're like, bro, Whoa. that's the worst part about getting into fitness. Did you, Mike? I'm sure you've had the same experience where you, you post like a cool pick of yourself and you're like, I'm going to get so much attention from the ladies. And all you get is attention from dudes, straight dudes too. straight dudes. They're like, Hey, you're the man. I'm like, sweet. Can we at least make out? And the guy's like, Nope, I'm nope. straight. And I'm like, Oh, sweet. This is Are you awful. sure? This six pack of old duels says you're not. That's right. Have a couple. See how you feel. Warm up. When you do dumbbell shrugs, do you do palms neutral or palms down? <laughs> okay. I, I but think I've done shrugging exercises like three times in the last I can decade. tell you don't have any traps, motherfucker. No, I just have the bro. My man. But seriously, traps, uh, not uh, attractive to females, I guess. I think there's like a point where you have like the nice, the nice like uh, beach body kind of guy where you got a little trap going. But Physique then there's guy. the like when you get into like big guy. Branch Warren. Yeah. That's not, yeah, that's not good. Then it kind of becomes freaky and Fetish. gross looking. Yeah. Got it. Next question from a man named Cooper Hazel, which I'm inclined to believe is can't be a real name. Cooper Hazel? Yeah. Sounds like a like an eighties Cooper star superhero Cooper quarterback guy. Burnt Sienna. Be sweet. So he says, Marcos, this is more directed towards you than anyone, I think. Let Views on swimming. I hear you're a good swimmer. It's place as cardio. And then he has a second part of his question, which is really sweet. Also, the anabolic diet slash anabolic fasting. I'll repeat that. Don't. Anabolic Please don't. fasting. Please don't. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Forget the swimming. All right. Are we done who's, with the swimming? Who's trolling me? I'll, I'll, I'll tackle the swimming. James, the swimming. The swimming is actually, and this is, people are going to get pissed at me for saying this, but um, if you're not a swimmer, swimming is terrible cardio because you tend to succumb to local muscular fatigue before you actually get cardiovascular fatigue because it's so technique dependent. If your technique is bad, your lats just burn out right away and you're like, this sucks. Now, if you're a swimmer, um, your technique's probably good enough where you can get a pretty substantial cardio com- component. But it, the, also, the other problem you run into is it's non-weight bearing and you have to alternate your breathing in such a way where you might not be able to train as intensely because your breathing is constricted. Totally. Um, so I would say there are, there are probably, from a pure cardio standpoint, I would say anything where you're running and possibly even cycling might even be better uh, from a cardio perspective. Um, but swimming is fine. For most people who don't have swimming technique, it's not great simply because they crap out. Do you know how to swim, James? I've tried it. Because I don't. I tried. When I blew my ACL, I, I tried to use uh, swimming as an alternative cardio form for but rugby. you sucked at it. I sucked at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to do when you don't know what you're doing. Um, okay, swimming, that was a good answer. Enough science. Time for some street shit. Marcos, anabolic fasting. Hit me. Oh, God. I don't even know what that means. I'm stumped. So the thing about anabolism is the less you eat, the more you grow. Is that what it is? No, wait, that's completely the opposite. Yeah, it's it's an oxymoron. Who the fuck came up with that? Scott. What is anabolic anabolic fasting? fasting So I think the idea, right, is that like you constrict your eating so that you get exaggerated uh, anabolic responses when you eat later. Right. Yeah. If the act of fasting is inherently catabolic, that's what people are kind of misunderstanding here. And the problem is that you spend so much time in a catabolic state fasting Mm -hmm. that the net balance of anabolism and catabolism, even with the exaggerated anabolic response in the subsequent meals, is still in a net negative catabolic balance. You just pissed away so much time not fucking 
eating and not supplying your muscles with protein they need, you can't make that all up in like a four hour feeding window or whatever. Yeah. And like that one big ass meal that you ate at some point gets capped off in terms of how much protein synthesis it generates. It's, it's not a pure dose response relationship. There's a dose response up to a plateauing point and then it kind of gets cut off. You can't make up for lost time. You can't make up for that lost time. I don't even know how you would come up with something like that. Anabolic fasting. Dude, you know what? That's dude, a good question. Mike, please, please. Let's talk about that snake diet that came up in the seminar yesterday. Jesus. So for those of you listening or watching, the snake diet, I think is basically, I can't even, it hurts to say this. Say Some it. dude made it up and you basically fast for 48 hours straight. And you chug like a and then you salty eat, you chug, you, salt you water. You like drink salt water during that time for whatever reason. And then you have like a really gigantic steak that's really fatty after 48 hours and then you repeat the process some number of times what's the purpose of that so it's it's suicide, like suicide i think mimicking a snake who like doesn't eat for a prolonged period of times and then has this giant bolus that passes through their body and the idea is that it makes you leaner but it's just basically like a, an exaggerated form of intermittent fasting at that point so jared feather told me that it's not just the concept of making you leaner which would make sense because you lose a whole lot of weight fasting for two fucking days um but and blowing uh, out your butthole with all that salt water your muscle mass that's correct, folks. Protein feeding once every 48 hours spares your muscle mass. I mean, if you don't have very much muscle mass to start, I could see that being an argument. Most of the people who have succeeded on the diet seem to be like people who are pretty over fat and relatively untrained. Yeah. They start training for the first time and start snake dieting and they like come out a little bit less muscle than they started. Who came up but with the snake diet? Some Snakes. Guy, some guy. Uh. <laughs> Was it on a plane? <laughs> that would be a horrible flight. We're going to feed you once on this 48 hour really flight. Oh my God. 48 hour <laughs> flight. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, that alone. I don't care how many times you get fed. Can you imagine a 48 hour flight? No. Ugh. And I fly a lot. My joints hurt. I would just have like a, a like an epistemic crisis. I wouldn't know where I was. Like, be sweet. You know, I can like do the long flights as long as I have stuff to do, but it's the connection. So, like, uh, when we did, um, uh, when we went to Thailand, we went from Bangkok, went from like, <laughs> Bangkok. where would we go? I don't remember if we JFK to Bangkok and then Bangkok to, or God damn it, JFK to Hong Kong and then Hong <laughs> Kong to Bangkok. Mm -hmm. The one to Hong Kong is like a 16 hour flight. And then you get Tell through us. that and you're kind of like, whew, so no what did you deal. do on that flight? Other than jacking off. Every I, I did jack off in the, a couple uh, times in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You uh, know what people gave me shit? Hold on real quick. Um, I told somebody that I like you know, regularly when I fly will jack off in the bathroom and people were like, what, how can you do that? And I was like, you mean like logistically or physically or like emotionally slash socioculturally? I mean, you just go in there and jack off. It's a fucking enclosed space. It's You're private. disgusting. The only You're time I, I have trouble with some of the, the bathrooms, the, uh, the height is really low. So like my forehead <laughs> is in the problem. wall and I'm trying to jack <laughs> off and I'm like <laughs> leaning on the top with my head. <laughs> you stand up. Yeah. So you just splooge on the mirror. I can't do it sitting down because it's too narrow for my, I have to spread my legs out. I yeah. can't do it with my legs enclosed. I, I like do this. it sitting down, but it's, it's a squeeze folks. Mm. It's like a London fucking phone. Booth London broil. Marcos, when you jack off on the plane, how I do you never do have, it? you know, you know, are you serious? Yep. It kills the time. That's a great way to just Super. like kill the time, especially when you are traveling for more than like eight hours. Right. And uh, you, those uh, are I just get a boner too. because it's like, this is when I would normally like just be, get a boner. Get a boner. Yeah. Have you told your therapist this? I should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> All right. So that's the snake diet. And I suppose we covered anabolic fasting. Folks, don't fast if you want to do anabolism. Next question right up uh, James's alley. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Frankel. 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 Sounds Jewish. Mm -hmm. Yo, Franco. Yo, Franco. Um, views on current fitness trackers. That's technically not a question, Gabriel. Those things have question marks at the oh, end. So, but he says, hold up. Pros, cons, and more for general population and athletes. Yeah. So there's this came up when we were at Temple with the department chair um, at the time. Kind of pitched the idea. He didn't. He didn't. Well, he wasn't pitching an idea, but he kind of brought up this thing of like, oh, like where people are using fitness trackers in our department and that's great. And I kind of gave him a counterpoint and I was like, we are kinesiology and within kinesiology, we're exercise science. We don't just track fitness. We program fitness. We tell you what to do, not look at what you did later on. Right. We already, we already have a structure, a plan. So I was like, I think this actually looks poorly on us because we're the ones who are supposed to be telling people what to do preemptively, not, looking at what you did today and being like, oh, that's good or bad. So I think with the fitness trackers, it's really, really good 
if you are somebody who is overweight, over fat, and really you're trying to increase your NEAT activities, that's non-exercise activity thermogenesis, right? Which is basically like keeping active, staying off your butt, and just spending energy, which is great. That's a perfectly fine way for people who just need to lose weight. For those of you who are training exercise-minded people or in fit fitness or sport, it's kind of stupid because it's like you're supposed to be executing your your either the pr training program that you right. wrote or somebody else wrote for you. Yep. And the the key is a um, you know they're in, they're too imprecise to have enough to tell you about if you're really executing a finely tuned plan. It's just an just accelerometer. More, yeah. If you just need more help, like um, uh, you know, just doing more like work throughout the day and you have no idea what you're doing, fitness trackers okay, but the, the body bug and stuff like that. These are just notoriously inaccurate. And some of them actually allow you to input like if you do the weight training workout, you can input that information in there. And you, but to me, it's not like. Oh, surprise, I did three sets of 10 in the bench yeah, press today. To do three sets like, of 10. you should have known that ahead of time, notebook. right? Marcos, when you get new clients to sign up for you, we understand you're a, you're a celebrity trainer in New York City. Do you immediately tell them to buy the body bug, swallow it, and just commit to the journey? You bet your candy ass I do. Mm. That's 20, a nice, that's 20, a nice long steps. journey. 20,000 steps every day. Damn. Just kidding. That's Damn. some like rocky level shit. Do you have you 20, ever had a client 000. accidentally misunderstand the use of a body bug and swallow it? Ah, oh, god, man! They make those. The shit you see in the city is incredible. They <laughs> they, they make <laughs> a, dev a, a tracking device to track your GI health where you swallow it. Oh, cool! And then you can either you can scan it with a little scanner, or you can you know eventually poop it out. Does it ever come out and just give you like an emoticon, like a little poop emoji? I'm glad I'm out of there. Oh shit! You're like, am I healthy? Like, I don't know, man. I was just trying to stay alive. Like, well, that was fucking money well spent. Yeah. So they'll, they'll actually come up. It has like an RFID chip or something. And you can scan them from externally from the outside and like scan their stomach. And it will like tell you how much time it's spent in there and how beep, fast beep, it's moving. Beep, beep. Bet done. you it works easier on the snake diet. Ooh. Boom, boom, easy. Just put in the piece of meat. <laughs> the the, uh, the doctor's like, so I've seen that you've eaten one meal in 48 hours. You're like, mm-hmm. Okay. Modern medicine. He's like, and leave my office. You're now a liability risk. Two things have really, like, I feel like I'm pretty mentally like fortuitous like things don't really get me off track too much mildly inaccurate but continue two things got me off my game this week that stupid song that you sent on the group chat where steven seagal says punani Ooh. that really was disturbing to me when you hear him say punani there's just something about I him want the punani. It's yeah so bad it's just like it really got under my skin i was so, just like shout out to my uh jujitsu buddy james chiarello um he, uh, well, like we were just chatting after practice and we started talking about Steven Seagal for some reason. He's like, you know, he has a reggae song. And I was like, no, I don't. And then he sent it to me and I was in shock for many hours. I, it was like, uh, you know, like after an explosion, like, beep, you can't hear anything. You like walk around, you have no idea. That Flashbang. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> for those of you not in the know, hopefully we'll link the, uh, it was it called? Does it have a it name? was like Me Want the Punani Me want or the something. Punani. If you want to see Steven Seagal. Steven dude, Seagal. Right, yeah. Dude, okay, it yeah. was so bad. Okay, that really psyched me out. And it still currently is now that we brought it up again. And then the snake diet. Yeah. I'm like, you're trying to emulate being a fucking snake? Yeah. I don't get it. Snakes are ja at jacked, right? How about the like, limbs. I'm going to do the cow diet so I can have three stomachs or whatever. Oh, that's so sweet. That's a good idea. How about the lamb diet or that's... the kangaroo diet? Pick one. They actually, the, that one guy with the... The, what's his name? Uh, Callum Von Moger. He has a, a supplement called Kanga Milk. Kanga. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Kangaroos are awesome. Yeah, they're cool. But he's natural, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people. I tell you, dude, <laughs> the kangaroos, the ones that we saw in Australia, they did not look natural. No, they were jacked, jacked out they, of their they mind. They feed them some shit over there. All right. All right. Um, Mike Doyla. Dude. We've known Mike for a long time. I have no idea how to say his name. Yeah. But uh, he asks, what are your most embarrassing gym-related stories? My name is Jim, so that's my whole life embarrassment. It's true. Marcos, why don't you tell us a story about some client interactions from the past? Are you legally allowed to get into that sort of thing? I'd rather not, but uh, something I see happen quite often and happens to the best of us is farting on the leg press. Ooh, that shit. It's loud, too, because yeah. your shit it's is all thunderous. Kind of you can't. And you're doing a set, so you can't pretend that you didn't do it. Can you physically do a decline sit-up without farting? Uh, some of us can. You need to strengthen that pelvic floor, son. <laughs> How do you strengthen the pelvic floor except for farting? Hmm? I do it without fail. As soon as I start going, it's like... <laughs> every time. When I do bodyweight squats before I do my squat squats, the first five reps are one continuous fart. Is farting at the gym 
socially acceptable. Because you know what I'm saying? You smell at the gym. You you sweat everywhere. Um, it's not a clean place. I don't know, man. I I'm just, not trying to I, fuck I my like, me- mechanics up by holding in farts. I think accidental farts are acceptable, but not right. like when you just like blow. You're just blowing blood and thunder. You're like, hey, you using that leg press? Yeah, there like, has to be some etiquette of the gym, hygiene, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, it's a sacred place to some of us. The worst is when <laughs> you're like you're you're like walking in the gym and somebody fucking just crop dusts and you're just like, what is happening? It's worse when you're mid. What like is you're going on? You're gasping for air and then like some guy farts in your fucking. It mouth. happens. I get it. Like we're guilty of that too. If I'm not saying like we don't, I have never done that. But there's some times where like somebody just had like a big bowl of kashi cereal. And they are just you, unloading. Man. I don't do it anymore because it's so That's bad. That's how you anabolic fast eating kashi cereal, yeah. which Oof. has like the highest rodent content, but whatever. Rod- <laughs> Does it really? Yeah, because it's stored in grain mills. Oh, shit. So they accidentally munch the, munch the rodents up? Enjoy that. You're not vegan anymore? Are you joking or no? No, I'm dead serious. Whoa, I didn't know that. That's fucking Google, bro. Five seconds on your phone. Go. Boom. Don't make me feel bad about it. I was- <laughs> Enjoy your... <laughs> You've been eating rodents, James. <laughs> families. They have families. They have love. Rodents experience love. Seriously, embarrassing gym stories. One from each of us. We got to go. Who's got first one? I'm trying to, like, something that I did or I saw. Either. Oh, I got a good one. I was. (laughs) That's better be real good. Well, it's sort of painful. I was, um, it was a Friday afternoon workout. And, you know, you're feeling yourself. You're, like, feeling all good. Too much pre workout. Uh, last workout of the week for me. Um, this happened about four years ago, five years ago. And, uh, I don't know. You just get in your head and you're feeling yourself. 225. I'm about to close grip it. Just slips right out of my left hand, right into my ribs. Fractured ribs. Fuck. Ooh. Not fun. But, you know, I'm laughing at myself because I'm like, that's what I get for being a dick and not being mindful. Did you finish the workout? I tried and it wasn't pleasant. No, fractured rib. That's not That was work. not fun. Did you tell people that, like, when they asked how you fractured ribs, did you make up some shit about a cool story about an alligator attack or some shit? Nope. Damn. I had like, I, that kind of stuff happens. Like we were at the gym working out yesterday and I had like, was doing squats and I put a 35 on one side and a 25 on the other and I'm squatting it for like sets of five. I'm like, what the fuck? Why does this feel wrong with my leg? I remember I worked at the gym at UIC when I was a student there. I was a student manager and uh, you had to go outside along this walkway to get into the gym if you lived in the dorms where I lived. And it was wintertime, so it was snow and ice all over the place. And uh, the gym had these big glass windows so you could see out to the walkway. So I'm walking out the walkway. I see all my colleagues. We're about to have a work meeting. And I just, like, eat shit, right? Just, like, <sighs> woo! Like, classic, like, banana peel, legs overhead, right? Like, just, like, pfft, totally eat shit. So all my colleagues see me, and they're like, ah! And I'm like, god damn it. So I'm, like, kind of walking back in, and they're all giving me shit. Like, oh, you fell. I'm like, yeah, I fell. And then they're all like, oh, my God, look at your arm. And I look at my arm, and I, I have a little scar left, but I'd actually split it all the way open where you could see, like, the bones. Oh, My forearm was shit. completely gashed open. Uh, it was really gnarly, and I didn't even notice it until they pointed it out. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's bad. And uh, my manager was like, uh, can you stay for the meeting? And everyone was like, no, and he's going to the hospital right what? now. So they gave me a bunch of gym towels and I like wrapped up my arm. And what the I, hell is wrong with your man? And then like once I became self-aware of the injury, then it started to hurt. You know uh-huh. what I mean? But at the time I just like I had fallen and I just. Your ego was hurt more. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even feel it. But then I, I had did, this like. I didn't game. fall. I did it on purpose. Guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a related story with blood and guts. I was training at uh, uh, City Fitness in New York, actually, like 14th Street or some shit. Oh, shitty fitness. Shitty fitness. Yeah. Do you, do is that uh, the like synergy? It's like 14th and 2nd or something. Yeah, like that's that. synergy now. Oh, it is. So anyway, there's a guy. Um, I was training. I was doing some shit. Nick Shaw and I used to train there all the time. I was training something, and I see this guy set up. this elaborate setup for Bulgarian split squats, like uh, yeah, leg elevated. And I was like. Rear foot elevated rear split foot, squat is yeah, what right, we call right. it. Sorry, like, sorry. So get with it. He was setting it up, but he was like, very unstable. And he's an athletic guy. He's pretty, you know, like, you know, like 190 or some shit. And the shit's wobbly as fuck. And I'm like, what is he doing? And the plates are coming closer to like coming off the bar every rep he does. But Wait, you, he, did, you said he weighed 190 or he had he 190, 190 loaded? He up? had like, um, man, like 225 or something loaded. Wow, that's a great so, For split squats? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so so man. it was cool. You know, he was doing a partial range of motion. But um, why uh, are you going to do plate, a partial so range of motion? Yeah, um, so he so, has no clips on it. So it's sliding off, sliding off. So he finishes the set, re racks the plates. Everything's fine. I'm like, all right. Woo, that was Lucky close. that time. Second set. The shit flies off his back, 
and he tries to save it by grabbing the the support. Oh no! And the weight jams his thumb in between the support Did and lose the it? barbell. He didn't lose the thumb, but he. I don't know why. I had this maybe face of calm and authority. He literally like turned around and make look looked me right in the eyes. I was like twenty feet behind doing like hammer strength shit, and I was just like this. I looked at him, and he was like. And he comes up to me and just shows me the white bone of his thumb. It was white. And I was like, uh, I remember it was, it was a shining moment. I was like, you need to go seek medical attention. But I think you're going to be okay. And he's like, okay. I'm like, he looks back at his rack. I'm like, I'll take care of that for you. So he just walked right out of the gym. Did you find the, the like thumb flesh laying around? Yeah. It was uh, tasted Ugh. saltier than I thought it would. Mm. But anyway, that guy's like, I, I wanted to be like, hey, man, life lesson. Don't do dumb shit like Bulgarian split squats. That's the worst clips. is when people try to bail and then they, they bail and then try to catch whatever that they're doing. Right. They always lose a finger or smash a hand yeah. or something. When you bail, you just got to go. You man. just got to bail yeah. and get out of there. Next oh, question. My thumbs. Is legendary. We come back to another huge scientific controversy of the modern day. Jeffrey Williams asks. Does fasting prime the muscles for anabolism? Didn't we just talk about this? Is the effect even bigger after a fasted workout? <sighs> so just real quick for the actual science. One of the biggest anabolic primers is having fully loaded muscle glycogen. So if you eat before workout in the several days, hours, and meal before, and you eat plenty of carbohydrates, when you start training and you have the most muscle glycogen, your muscles are actually uh, going to elicit more growth that way than if you start fasted. Secondly, if you have an intra-workout shake, fasted uh, especially, but if you're not fasted, it works a little bit too. You get more anabolism, especially you lose less muscle, more anti-catabolism. So um, the relationship to fasting and anabolism is basically that if you fast, the more you fast, the less chance you are of being anabolic. This is like it's backwards. Get, okay. It's like killing me. Well, here's the thing. I think a lot of the fasting stuff comes from like the more holistic approach. And even, um, you know, for the people involved in psychedelics, you fast, spiritual energy, get rid of all this. But they never say you're trying to get jacked. But I think that's where this whole fasting concept came from. So in combining trying to to blend the fasting with the science-based proven shit it, yeah. it just doesn't go hand in hand so i get part of the fasting and i get trying to be anabolic i just would never ever comprehend to bring both of them together yeah. it just makes no sense there's to a time me. to there's a time to fast and try to get one with your, your fucking your spiritual right. energy and shit and there's a time to get fucking jacked and that involves eating six times a day and shit like that any of the intermittent fasting styles and this is just kind of another play on that really is good for people who are not super muscular, and this is not meant to sound insulting, and they just want to maintain like a really nice, lean, like tight physique. That's great. Go for it. Is there, what I say, is there a better way to go about that? Sure. If you want to be jacked, like big, muscular, and lean, it's just not a good strategy, right? So if you want to, if you want to stay like, and this again is not meant to be insulting, but if you're like 145, 155, and you just want to look lean and tight, like that's great. That's probably a, a, a okay way to go about it. But if you want to be like, 195 and 10% body fat ain't gonna happen uphill probably not bro so next question is for uh, my polish is rusty i assume this man's polish so is james mm -hmm. <laughs> mache kalish maybe mm. as good of a guess as will be made on you put here that that little like us. flavor spin on it i have no idea yeah he Ma says mac j mac j kalish <laughs> for guys around 30 Busy around the clock. Boy's getting it, you know what I'm saying, on all fronts. Not sports professionals. James. Marcos. Jeez. What's the optimal effort to put into Jim to still have gains? Who's Jim? Oh, James. <laughs> you got to put as much effort into Jim as he uh, as he let you. Optimal effort into Jim uh, to still have gains, but don't risk a burnout. That is a tough question because the um, degree of burnout in this scenario is probably going to be more of a product of your lifestyle and less of your training uh, factors like volume, intensity, frequency, things like that. So uh, it's a tough one. I well, would say, how much? What What do you want to accomplish? Start right there. Are you trying to like just your maintain intentions? your existing fitness and body composition? That's a good question because he said optimal effort to put in a gym, but he didn't say what he wanted. Right. You know, if you want to be an IFB pro, optimal efforts like you quit your job. But yeah, I think for somebody like you can get away with doing as little as two times per week if you just want to maintain your current level of fitness. 
I would say that's probably not great, but if that's what you want, if you want to start getting better, you can try like training three times a week for one to two hours a day. But even then it's going to be so slow. I find that like for, for most people, you gotta, you gotta be pushing four days or more. Yeah. Honestly, so a lot of it depends on like, so for, for example, if you want to train whole body and truly give your legs due justice, you're going to have to train kind of a lot. If you're okay with just having a jacked ish upper body, like, like, um, like, a like a club fuck boy look, you know what I mean? Why are you looking at me? I'm just, cause you've been to a lot of clubs and fucked a lot of fuck boys. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Just that, you know what I'm saying? That look, like 160, sort of like Tom Cruise looking kind of yeah. shit. And that's a, like a very a very good look for a lot of totally. people. Twice a week, upper body sessions, I think is totally fine. Like literally two workouts a week, Monday, Thursday. And then, but you got to control your diet for the rest of the shit. That with diet control and maybe just a high level of physical activity in general, you can look really good and stuff like that. But we After don't know that, if that's what he wants. Sure. So again, it goes back to setting your intentions. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to have the surfer body? Are you trying to do the CrossFit games? Are you, you got a powerlifting CrossFit competition, games. a bodybuilding competition? Let me how much, all how much time are you trying to dedicate Let to me the put gym? This out I there. want a flexing contest on a surfboard while I do a wad. So all of us are busy. Like Mike and I travel. Marcos works a fuckload, right? Um, what I have found, especially with myself and with my clients, is that actually training more frequently, and this is going to sound backwards to most people, but training more frequently, it becomes inherently less stressful because each individual session only takes like 30 minutes to an hour. Whereas if you train- Do that shit at lunch. Right. You train three or four days a week, all of those sessions to be reasonably good are going to have to be like an hour and a half, two hours to get you know something out of it. So it's one of those things like- uh I find that actually training more frequently and auto-regulating kind of mm-hmm. your rest days really is a, 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 an excellent strategy for when you're busy because you only have to work out for like 30, 45 minutes at a time. It's the big chunks that are difficult. Yeah. When you train at lunch, how important do you guys think it is to um, rub it in your coworkers' faces? Like, oh, hey, Julia, what you got there? A big cheeseburger for lunch? Yeah, you enjoying that? Oh, no, I can't have any, honey. I'm going to go train. You got to have the designer water bottle, like yep. the, the stainless tapered shape one. Yep. You got to have an unnecessary gym bag. Yeah, you got to have the Fitbit, Mm -hmm. iPhone watch. You got to be the suburban drug cartel guy with the duffel bag full of supplements. You know what I mean? Chalk belt. It's a Nas RX type of day. Yeah. But um, I don't know, man. I feel like that kid is probably just some kid who's like overworked, a lot of stress, just trying to figure it out. He's been in the gym, you know, hard gainer or whatever. And he hasn't made maybe that extra effort to really just focus on his fitness. And I get it. That's life. You're stressed on all these fronts. The gym is probably your only outlet. Change it up a little bit. You know, dedicate more time maybe to cleaning up your diet, to sleeping right, maybe maybe making your workouts more effective instead of two-hour workouts twice a week. Like James said, four 30-minute sessions. Yep. Got to change something. If the same things you've been doing got you nowhere, change it up. There's a good quote that I can't remember. I'll Perfect. Paraphrase. It's Thanks. Like, it, and no, it's validating what Mark, what you said. It was like, uh, if you, if you do, do what this, you've always done, yes. you will, you, God damn it, James, you messed me up. Damn it. If you always done what you, you always <laughs> do what you always done, you'll always get what you always got. Thank well, you. It's like the, Thanks, ma- the mark of insanity but, is like doing the same thing and, uh, and expecting, expecting a different, different result. result. For sure. So just, uh, just to wrap that up, answer for you, uh, Mache, I think that, um, it's Mache, it's funny. If that's his real name you pronounce, the, 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 that would be unfortunate to go we to Russia. We just call him the Macho Man? Well, because like Macha in Russia is urine, so it's like, Ooh. if you say your name's Mache in Russia, people are like... <laughs> is it like urine or like piss? Uh, Macha. Yeah, piss. Yeah. No. Yeah, piss. Something in between like the two. Less formal. You don't just say it in Great. Now he's company. gonna focus on changing his name instead of his workouts. Thanks, guys. That's true. That's Perfect. a good start. You know what I'm saying? Free, f- fresh name, fresh workout. He's gonna be like, my name means piss. <laughs> new year, new me. <laughs> Forever alone, Fuck like all emoji. <laughs> all right. Um, but anyway, the summary is, you know, if you're training between two and four days a week, that's probably reasonable and uh, probably won't tax your recovery too much. I, I would definitely wouldn't recommend any like six time a week shit with a super busy schedule. That's yep. just overkill. But I think if you're training, you know, if you're trying to train like once a week, I know people have tried to train once a week for weights. It's just not enough. There's just no way it's enough. There's no muscle. At that right. point, you just have to submit that fitness is not a priority totally. right. and be okay with it. Yeah, for sure. You can just well look said. like a regular person. It's not waste time like all of us have. All right. Next question is from Mercia Balaj. Balai. There's a J at the end of your name. How the fuck do you say that? Balaj. B A L A J. Balaj. You're reading that shit and you're like, I got this. B A L A. Bala. And there's a J. You're like, oh, skirt. 
Bala. <laughs> J Bala. It's like Balai or is it Balaj? Balaj. Tell us, when you hear this, why don't you tell us how you say your name? He says, in regards, very related to the last question, in regards to recovery, is quote unquote bad sleep, and what he means by that is trouble staying asleep, waking up off in the middle of the night, etc., a sign of under recovering, and what would be a good duration for deep sleep? So, this is kind of a technicality, but uh, I don't think it's a sign of under recovering so much as you are overreaching, which under recovering can kind of result into that but usually like having sleep disturbances is a sign that you are in an overreach or uh, pr- approaching an overreached state so i think it's worth mentioning that probably sleep quantity is probably the most important thing that we can strive for and then within that we want as high of a sleep quality within so that quantity is more important i would say quantity is more important even if the quality is not great sure. but obviously to say it's, it's hard to weigh both of those things right because you say like well if, if you're just laying there restless for eight hours did you really get that much recuperation but that's not sleep you right know I mean? yeah. so i would say um quantity first and then within sure. that maximizing the quality i would say uh, you, it's probably less of an under recovery issue because that implies that you're not doing something for uh, enhancing your recovery what's more likely the case is that you are training or some combination of stressors that are uh, accumulating to a severe degree and now you need to start thinking about fatigue management maybe more than you have been like deloading yeah. taking some light days here or there marcos i think uh it's crazy man and you know working in the city sleep is probably the most underappreciated thing new yorkers just don't sleep and they're like they i can't don't. make any gains and my brain's right. falling apart what's wrong it's sleep, nutrition, and then the training. <clears throat> yep. I get a shit ton of people that work their ass off in the gym, and it's like, hey, man, you did a great job today. Get some sleep tonight. Sure, I'll sleep three hours. Perfect. You're good. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks that's baby. That's nuts. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, You're going to win the but Olympics. You know, people are so stressed in the city. I get it. Again, it's realistic, but... You ever train any corporate lawyers? Yes. Holy shit. I've Go trained... Ahead. You name it, I've trained it. Yep. Besides, like, Lion Tamer, I think I've trained everything else. <laughs> Sweet, but Gazelle Tamer, yes, you have. Twice. It's not a very hard job because <laughs> I'm pretty tame to begin with. Um, yeah, like uh, corporate lawyers, it'll be like, yeah, I work uh, 100 hours a week. But then when the project comes, like, we have to close a case. I work for 120 hours a week. You're trying to count up, see if there's actually that many hours in a week. And they're like, yeah, but afterwards, when we're finishing, like, we were finished the project, submit the case, everything's good. I'm like, I'm like waiting to hear, but like, you sleep a lot of time? They're like, just do a shitload of cocaine and party for a long time. And they're like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> After we closed the deal, we went out to party for like eight hours and I slept 30 minutes and I'm here right now. Yeah, That's like, cool. back to work, case number two. But uh, I can't emphasize enough sleep, 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 sleep. Otherwise, you're just destroying your body. See, we agree on a lot of stuff. Or well, you're supposed to I tell people, on a lot of stuff. Well, in the recovery talk, we talk about sleep all the time. And, like, we like the same anime. We like all sorts of stuff. Except Batman. Next Except question. we don't agree on Batman. Don't, Marcus, you're going to ruin our podcast by talking shit about question. Batman. Question. All right. Um, yeah. One last question here. Final sure. question for, for today's episode. All right. Anton Johnson. It's not Anton Johnson. Anton This has got a little, little, little thingy on, his, on the O. Says, tips on balancing training and postgraduate studies would be great. Well, either would be, but here's a tip. You want to get fucking jacked? Quit that bullshit postgraduate studies. Hey, Marcos, you ever read some shit in a nerd book that helped you get jacked? Nope. nope. Fuck that. Fuck school. You're trying to get big. Balance the shit by taking postgraduate studies off that motherfucking scale. Have that motherfucker tip up in the other direction. Now you can balance a whole lot more training on that other side, James. Yeah. I mean, aside from dropping out, <laughs> the more stuff you have on the docket that is a priority, like your career, your education, the less time throughout the day that you'll have for training. I think what the, the disconnect for a lot of people is they assume that they have to be an iron brother right? Everyone else is training hardcore all the time. Why aren't I? Well, everyone else has basically moved on with their career and in a nice stable position. If you're still doing postgraduate studies, you're still in a transitionary period where fitness might not be on the top of the docket. It might be midway through the docket where you're still, it's still important to you, but you can't expect to pour in as many resources as many other people. And that's perfectly okay. And you shouldn't feel bad about it. So I would say do the best you can, you know, Renaissance prioritizing. (laughs) <laughs> Boom. You're That's welcome, Nick Shaw. Yeah, that'll be a royalties for you. <laughs> so, uh, but on a serious note, um, first of all, the stuff Marcos is talking about, get your sleep, get your nutrition in order so that you can maximize your outcomes from the time you do have to train. You don't want to hamstring yourself in ways you don't have to. Because remember, getting sleep is also good for postgraduate studies. The biggest advice I have, and I've done a little bit of postgraduate studying, 
um, is uh, make sure to have a to-do list. Make sure to uh, finish your assignments early slash on time and uh, have a, like a work list to do every day. When you finish your work, you go train, then you go relax and you get enough sleep. The way people get themselves in, most of the time in, in um, grad school into situations in which they miss a lot of sleep in which they can't make the gym is because they're being fucking uh just putting off their work for too fucking long fucking off in lab you ever go into lab and you just don't do shit you just fucking watch youtube videos and you're like uh should probably run some experiments oops and then you're like oh i'm up at you instagram i come up at 2 a.m running experiments hashtag science no one fuck you did shit wrong everyone else left by 9 p.m because they did shit right they showed up on time etc if you structure your life like all of my phd program i trained hard as fuck i dieted really well i gained a shitload of muscle why? Because I did school really well. I did all my shit on time. I didn't ever, I finished my PhD like three months earlier than the next person in our class. Cause I just fucking came to work, man. If you do your work, you would be surprised how many hours in the day you have left to do all kinds of shit like train. But if you fuck around a lot and then you try to do school, like, oh my God, school's so hard. Hashtag dissertation. Hashtag, you know, like comps. Like, oh my God, got my comps coming up. Like, hey, motherfucker, if you studied, comps wouldn't be that hard. I studied for like five minutes for my comps. Fuck you. Shit, I did that shit all day long, right? Like for three years, you're going to know some shit. But if you like fuck around and like, you know, cram, like here's a thing. There's another thing. If you're an undergraduate, you can get away with cramming and shit like that if you're reasonably intelligent. Postgraduates, you got to stop cramming. You've committed yourself to that career. You committed yourself to learning about that shit. There has to be some shit you do every day. So approach studying like you do training in a planned, periodized manner. Check the fucking boxes, and you'd be surprised how much time you have left to not only train but do proper diets and also just like you know watch Batman and other great shows about great superheroes. Marcos, can you really quickly explain to us, just to close out the segment, what it is you find a problem with the classic American superhero? Of what Batman? does Batman do? He's rich. He plans. So is Tony Stark. Next, but Batman's more evil than Tony Stark. He doesn't do anything. He just locks bad guys up that keep breaking out of prison and kill more I've people. I've never seen Tony Stark kill anybody. Um, that's he, because he, he disintegrates people. them with, yeah. with his lasers. <laughs> you okay, just don't they, see they, the yeah, Peter Parker, people. his parents died. I don't see him all mopey and relying on Peter Parker's a straight Have you seen bitch, the Spider-Man dude. movies? He mopes He's the whole time. Uh, we're not talking about the first uh, wave, all right? Well, Thanks. the second wave was even worse. Uh, maybe for you, bro. I had that. What's that hot redheaded chick? They do like the sexy kiss uh, scene and her oh, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. nips She's, are blazing. Carrot top. <laughs> what's she in Jumanji? What's her name? Um, that bitch Scott. What's her name? He I knows. can't think of anyway. Name. Uh, backtracking real quick. Uh, set your intentions right for uh for your fitness goals for your life goals. Period. Um, strategize, prioritize. That's it. I think that's where everyone always messes up. Fitness has become a trend now, like a like a fad. Everyone wants to do it. Hey, I'm gonna go to this class or that class or go work out and become an Iron Brother. Cool, but set your intentions right so you get the most out of your time and out of your life and you're not running in circles. Well said. Couldn't close it better than that. Folks, see you next time. Bye.